Radiant Black is an independent book owned by Kyle Higgins, a universe that he created. And at the beginning of our adventure, a black hole arrived on the planet Earth, and a character known as Nathan passed away in a battle against the Radiant Red character. As Nathan was passing away, the alien that bestowed its powers upon Nathan arrived to Nathan's friend, Marshall, asking if he has what is required, will he take the life? Marshall nodded and told him with determination that he would. And today we're going to be continuing the story of Radiant Black right here at Comic Storian. This is the channel where we take your favorite comic books, we turn them into audio dramas, and I read them back to you in a dramatic fashion. And today we're going to be bringing you the last issue of Radiant Black Volume 1, and then we're going to be bringing you some of Volume 2. Marshall sits by while the paramedics continue to work on Nathan, but there is no response. He finally gets up, rushing forward. Nathan! Nathan, come on, man! This isn't it! It can't be! He shouts, falling to his knees, screaming in frustration. To everyone's surprise, Nathan suddenly gasps, taking a lung full of air, and the paramedics begin to shout, getting Nathan to an ambulance. Marshall stands there for a moment before rushing into a nearby alleyway. A bright flash of light can be seen, and Radiant Black leaps into the sky. Marshall, now the new superhero. He flies for a moment before finally slamming into the ground on a farm outside of town. He gets to his knees, shouting into the sky. I don't want it! Do you hear me? I don't want it! He shouts, but there's no answer. And he finally falls back to the earth, sitting there, just catching his breath. Later, he waits in the hospital, flipping through the internet, watching a podcast that badmouths Radiant Black for what happened. The battle between Black and Red, and the crumbling of an entire building and how that battle put one guy in the hospital. Nathan's parents come in with Marshall jumping up, trying to get news, learning that Nathan is hooked up to machines, but he can't survive on his own. As the words flow over him, images begin to flash in his mind. The alien informs him that their sync is proceeding much faster than it did with Nathan. It explains that Marshall is now connected to all of existence. And once again, it warns him about a war that is coming, and Marshall nods. Okay, you know what? As cool as all of this cosmic stuff is, I really don't care right now. What I care about is finding the son of a bitch that put my best friend in a coma. You help me find the red bastard, and I'll do whatever cosmic stuff you want, deal? He says, anger in his voice rising. Meanwhile, Red is elsewhere, punching a hole in the ground, cursing herself for what she did. Stupid! Out of control! You wanted to handle it? You can't handle anything! She shouts. At least we agree on something, Black says over her shoulder, and she turns to see Marshall in shock. Y you're alive? She gasps, but the helmet disappears to reveal Marshall. No, he's in a coma because of you. Energy gathering in his hands, Red prepares for the attack, and the two rush at each other. The shockwave sends them both tumbling away, but Red can barely recover. Hey, eyes up! I'm not gonna do you like you did Nathan! Marshall shouts as he hits her again, hitting her with an energy blast that knocks her into the sky. He chases after her, hitting her again and again. I watched you back at the restaurant, absorbing stuff. Well, we screw with gravity. As long as I keep you in the air, you can't absorb shit! He says as he hits her again. She grabs him by the wrist. Let's find out! She says, absorbing the energy out of Radiant Black. His suit slowly pulling away. Damn it! Stop! He shouts at her, exploding, and knocking her away from him, sending her crashing into the frozen lake below. Red stands up, now super armored. She punches Black again, sending him across the ice. Damn it! Black gasps as Red stomps on him, hitting him again and again, until his helmet begins to crack and anger flashes through his eyes as he fires off a blast of energy. Die! He screams out, the energy ripping through her as he pours it on. Her armor ripping away and Marshall realizing that he's blasting a woman. I just wanted to scare him. I didn't mean, she says. And Marshall stops his energy blast, staring at her. A light appears behind them and both radiant pink and radiant yellow appear through the portal. Hey, sorry, really don't ever show up anywhere uninvited, but you're all in legit danger, Pink tells them. Wait, how many of you things are there? Marshall gasps and the pair warn him, telling him that someone is coming. Someone that can counteract their powers. A flash of an energy blade rips through the group, dropping all of them to the ground. It hurts, I know, a consequence for playing with fire. The voice says as its owner materializes in front of him. You have something that is not yours. 
You will all lose your lives. Unfortunate, but necessary. You have no choice but one. Will your planet die as well? The warrior asks all of the Radiance as he readies another attack. The warrior stands at the gathering of Radiance, and Marshall glares back at him. Look! Right, the red one and I are kind of in the middle of something. So if you don't mind... But the warrior rushes forward, slashing the group, knocking them away. Everyone begins to open fire on the warrior, but the warrior twists out of the way, knocking them all aside. Red comes up behind him, trying to surprise him, but the warrior turns, punching her across the face. He leaps over to Black, bringing his sword down, but Black suddenly disappears into a pink portal. Marshall then falls out of the sky, landing in the crowded streets of Tokyo. We're in Tokyo? What the hell? He asks, turning to the group and falls to the curb. Disoriented by the portal, he turns to Radiant Pink, thanking her for the save. You had the portal up your sleeve the whole time? He asks, and he's a little irritated as she waited so long to use it. Portals teleporting, it's draining, man. I jumped from Sydney to Chicago and then to Tokyo, that's insane. Red steps forward, trying to calm everyone. Are we really doing this here? She asks, and Marshall whirls on her. Not a goddamn word out of you. You don't get to weigh in here. Yellow nods, explaining that they need to hurry, that the warrior has followed them through all of the previous jumps. And Pink agrees, telling the group that she just needs a quick rest. Take a break. Time to try something else, Marshall tells them, beginning to power up. But he turns to Red before they all begin to hover. This shit with you and me, it's not done. Not by a lot. He snaps, and with that, the group begins to glow. And Marshall lifts them all into the air. As they all begin to fly over Japan, Yellow explains that the warriors showed up a few days ago and began to attack them. Marshall asks Yellow and Pink where they're from, but Pink refuses to tell them. And dare I ask, what's your deal? Marshall asks Red. I didn't mean to hurt your friend. I was just trying to scare him. It's all you need to know. She tells him, and Marshall disagrees. But the conversation is interrupted as the warrior appears above them, slamming into Marshall, knocking him out of the sky. With his concentration lost, the rest of the Radiants all begin to fall, and Pink manages to open up a portal for Red and Yellow to drop into. She manages to grab Marshall out of the sky, teleporting them all away. With a crack of energy, the pair appear in space, and they float there for a moment before Pink begins to freak out. Oh my god! Oh my god! Are we in space? Are we breathing? Can we talk? Can you hear me? She begins to shout out, and they both look up in surprise as they see a massive space battle going on, with ships exploding in bursts of light. Two large robot-like creatures suddenly turn to them, beginning to float forward. You have to teleport us out of here right now! Marshall shouts at Pink. She grabs her head. It's too far! She shouts, and the beings begin to get closer, with Marshall grabbing Pink's shoulders. All right, you gotta trust me on this or we're both dead. When I say now, you're gonna think of a Japanese forest, and I'm gonna hit you with everything I've got. Energy cracks around them, and the pair disappear, reappearing on solid ground, both happy and hugging over still being alive. Pink is shocked, asking what Marshall did to boost her power. Our black holes have training wheels on them. We've got some level ups for sure. The red one gave me a cape. It was totally dope, he tells her. I am so confused, she says with a smile. And Marshall agrees as he looks around, seeing that they are now in Russia. Wait, did you send us to Russia? Meanwhile, Yellow and Red have appeared in the snowy side of a Japanese mountain. Moving through the woods, Yellow believes that Ava took Black somewhere. The real conundrum is figuring out where our glitchy friend wound up before he can find us. He begins to say, and they both look up in shock as they find the warrior crumpled on the ground before them, his helmet cracked. Okay, I swear I didn't plan that, honest. Yellow says, and Red nods, noting that the warrior is breathing. Good. Let's get some goddamn answers. It was before that that the warrior was floating in space, but he came to and floated towards an abandoned spaceship. Climbing aboard, he brought the ship online, turning and moving it through the vastness of space. Now, in Russia, a crowd has begun to gather with Marshall looking at Ava, asking her to teleport them again, but she collapses to her knees, too tired to continue. Okay. Got it. We go normal then, which means quick change, yeah? They both glow, returning to their civilian clothes, and he puts her arm around his shoulder, beginning to carry her away. Meanwhile, over in the woods, the warrior has been sealed by Red's abilities. He looks at Yellow and Red as he comes around. The respectful thing would be to immolate an atonement for your stupidity, sinking with that which you do not understand. What do you hope to accomplish by drawing out your deaths? The warrior asks them but Yellow demands to know what they've gotten themselves into. You've marked your world. Your species will die, the warrior tells him. Who are you and where did you come from? Red asks, but the warrior's helmet begins to glow. Don't worry. 
Soon it won't matter. You'll all be dead. Thank you for the charge. He says, disappearing from his makeshift prison. Meanwhile, back in Russia, Ava and Marshall have managed to steal some coffees. They talk briefly about their experiences as, as Ava begins to ask about Nathan in the hospital. The two are then confronted by the people that they stole the coffees from, but since Marshall doesn't speak Russian, the pair stand. Feeling better? He asks Ava, and she nods, and they glow and transform. It's high time we interrupt the wooded weekend getaway, Marshall tells her as they begin to disappear. Meanwhile, over in the woods, the warrior is fast, hitting yellow and red hard, disappearing into the shadows and reappearing. He knocks yellow away, stabbing red in the chest, letting her fall to the ground, beginning to bleed out. She crawls across it, reaching for a tree to absorb and alter the material. Survival mode. Absorb to repair. Try to stop the loss of fluid. Clever, but too advanced. The warrior tells her, driving his sword once more into her chest. She gasps, but reaches out, grabbing the blade. Maybe. Just need to absorb something stronger. She gasps again. The warrior tries to pull away, but she stands now heavily armored, punching him across the forest. Yellow stands by her side as the pair begin for the next round of fighting. The warrior stands hitting a button on his arm, activating a massive explosion that rips through the forest, knocking the heroes away, creating a giant crater. At that moment, Ava and Marshall appear, with Ava rushing over to Yellow. Wendell, what happened? She asks, and he shakes his head. He charges his tech from us. We're powering him, Wendell says, realizing what's happening. They all turn as the warrior comes through the smoke of the explosion. A reductive understanding of the old ways and the new. You tempt fate! You dance among the world enders in the shadow of Armageddon! All the while unknowing to the extent that you are a mistake! An improbable accident! A doom on your planet! With that, he prepares himself, readying his weapons. The Radiants gather Marshall in front. Let's go, Cosmic Slash! I am 001, marked for death by Mlaat! Now in service of the new way, the warrior tells them. And I'm gonna finish your acts if it's the last thing I do. Marshall snarls at him, but his chest begins to glow and a new voice echoes in the forest. No, the voice commands. A massive hand reaching out of Marshall's chest, spinning through the air and grabbing the warrior, pulling him in. The light and the hand suddenly disappear and Marshall drops to the ground in shock. What was that? Ava shouts, and Wendell comes forward asking Marshall if he knows what happened. I didn't do anything. A giant goddamn robot stuck its arm out of my chest. It's been there the whole time? Wendell nods, telling him that if the threat is over now, they should all go home and get some rest. Hopefully, they'll be able to get some answers from the robots of existence later. Marshall nods, but begins to move towards Fred, interested in finishing their fight. But Wendell hits him with a blast of energy, knocking him down. All right. We're knocking this off right now. You two have problems? You got baggage? That sucks. It's also a part of life. And now, so is a permanent link to the black hole. There are far bigger fish out there that want us dead. He glares at Marshall for a moment before helping him to his feet. Ava is just happy that everything is over, teleporting them all away. Meanwhile, out in the desert, a group of mercenaries have found a strange vault. They finally get it opened to reveal the alien weapons within. The leader smiles as he steps forward. Looks like we're in business. And that is where we're going to be leaving off Radiant Black today. Now this is halfway through volume number two, so if you want to get caught up yourself, go check out volume number two. But honestly, this is one of my favorite independent books out there, and I've decided to throw it into the regular rotation. So we'll be rotating Radiant Black, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Power Rangers on Tuesday, Wednesday of every week. So make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you like these other kinds of stories, and let me know. On that note, guys, I will see you next time right here at Comic Storian, and don't forget to check us out at Patreon, Twitter, and TikTok, and I'll see you later.